Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network presented by iHeartRadio, Seth Levitt, and my main man, O.J. McDuffie Juice. We are literally back in the building. We are back in the building, man. It's like a, a lot of the guys are back in the building, except, but you know, we, we love being in the building. There's a buzz. Man. I walked yeah. in here and there Beautiful was a buzz thing. in the building. It was a little bit harder to get in. Yeah. They're like this guy. It was. Yeah, so it was. Back in. Definitely. I was like, I'm here to see Emmanuel Ogba. And they're like, well, come on in. They roll out the That's right. Carpet. That's right. Emmanuel Ogba is here in the fish tank. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. Yeah. It's great to have you in here. You know, the last time we got to see you at work, most of us, I mean, everybody here gets to see it, but the last time we got to see you at work right across the field over there yeah. was back in November. Mm -hmm. You were playing the team that drafted you. Yeah. And, and then in like an instance, your, yeah. your world changed, right? Yeah. Can you talk about how, how your mindset had to change so quickly in that moment and what you went through and then in the however many months it's been since that time, a guy like yourself who's a team leader, who's a leader in the community, who's used to putting people on his back, yeah. now having to rely on so many others as you go through this rehabilitation process. Oh, man. When it happened, it was, it was tough. It was tough for me, you know, just going through an injury again because it wasn't, it's not my first rodeo, but it was tough mentally just watching my brothers who are, you know, we trained hard in the off season, you know, getting ready for this, this big season and, you know, going down. But I just realized I had to leave from a from from a back for watching. So I had to like kind of coach the younger guys and like to show them. It's different when you're sitting down and watching at home. You can see things more clearly than actually on the field. So um, so I got a chance to you know coach them. But I'll, I'll tell you this: it was tough mentally just just watching it. But I was happy I was able to you know help the guys out and improve as well. As a player who's used to being involved, we know there there have been guys who come through this league and they can't you know. Oh, I, I get to show up to work and get a check, but I don't have to actually work hard, you know. But as a guy who's used to being a contributor, who's on the field, who wants to make an impact, to all of the sudden have to, to not be involved and like, you know, are you tiptoeing around? How much do I get involved? How much do I stay away and let the guys who are playing? Like, do you have to go through that balance mentally? Oh yeah, definitely. I know when I had my surgery, the doctor advised me not to, well, be on the sideline yet because I could still, you know, mm hurt it more but but that was tough because I'm used to being on the sideline. Yeah. And um but but it it was definitely rough for me. But like I said, you know, I did my part, you know, I, I stayed in, you know, I talked to the guys. I was like, hey, this is what I'm seeing, this is what you're getting. You know, it's kinda of just helped the best way I can, you yeah. know, without actually being out there. So. Find a way to contribute. Yeah. And then from the standpoint of the rehab itself, um, I mean you coming in here, I don't see a, a brace, I don't see anything. Yeah. You look like you you're feeling ready. I went, you know, try to do a little research here, and I, I saw an interview that uh, the Dolphins content team did last year around this time, and your father was there, and he talked about coming over to this country as an immigrant, and he said, when you get to the States coming from Africa, it's like you're at ground zero, yeah. and you're starting over again. Is there an element of that ground zero coming off of an injury? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like I said, it's not my first time being hurt, so you know, I've, I've, I've gotten hurt before, but, uh, but definitely it's like watching my dad work, and you know, bring his whole family here, starting from scratch, um, driving two hours a day to work and two hours coming back just to provide for his family, just inspires you. If my dad can do that for his family, after being good in Nigeria, like he was, uh, he was getting paid good, and he moved over here not to start from scratch. You know, just if he can do that, like it's just football. You know, right. I can, I can do it too. You know, so you know, you're born in Nigeria, yeah. and then you, you, your family, you know, you guys come here from Africa. And you're nine years old. Yes. Right. And then um, you guys build a life here. Yeah. But you clearly are, are chasing a dream, man. You know, what I mean, and you and you accomplish so much. So, so tell me about that, the participation in the NFL Africa program where you and four other current, you know, uh, NFL players from, yeah. you know, from, you know, from uh, Africa, African descent. You know, when you yeah. went to Nairobi. Yeah. Know? Oh, my gosh. What an experience. Yeah. Like that. That was a truly a humbling experience, you know, just just watching the kids out there just happy. You know they don't have much, but they're still grateful. You see them dancing from drill to drill. You know, we had Afro beats playing. You know, they were just excited, just excited just to be out there. And you get to talk to them, you, you get to coach them. It's how, how quickly they pick up on stuff. Mm -hmm. So you realize like, give them like a month, like two months. We had to teach them how to play football in two days, really. And, uh, but, but it, was, it was a crazy experience. It was good going back home to my home continent, even though it wasn't like my home country right but it was it was awesome it was an amazing feeling it was like the culture is still similar so I could 
kind of see my people in them. So I got a chance to eat the food too uh, back then. It was, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I called my mom, I'm like, hey, mom, you can't believe what I'm eating this. They make it over there. And she was shocked they make that <laughs> over there, even though it's the East. Um, but but yeah, man, it was it was it was awesome. So tell me about you talk about some of the some of the kids or people yeah. that participate. I think the age were sixteen to twenty one. I think yeah. something like that. Yeah. So I mean, you see any future fans over there, man? Oh oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Like I saw a guy. He's like seventeen or eighteen years old, built bigger than me, can move well. Bigger than you. Bigger than me. Bigger than me. Moves well. And I didn't even like that was the first time he's ever played football. Cause they're, they're, okay, so they got them from like basketball. They play a little bit of basketball. So they know how to like move a little bit, but they've never done football drills. So they had to coach them from ground up, how to get into a stands, how to pass rush, how to rush the quarterback. So it was, it was an amazing experience. You know? So you saw that transformation in a couple of days too, huh? Oh yeah. That, so, that, to pick up that, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that quickly. Yeah, so we, we taught them on, let's say, we taught them like on Tuesday and then they picked it up. And Thursday was the competition. And they were doing stuff I've never seen before. So I'm <laughs> like, okay, I see y'all. And they kind of like, they, you will teach them stuff, but they incorporate their own, you know, moves with it too as well. So, yeah. What a, an experience for these young guys yeah. to have four or five NFL players, mm-hmm. right? People at the, the 1% of the 1%, I always say, at the highest level yeah. to show up and teach them these skills. I can only imagine what they took from you. But what about you? What did you take from them? Yeah, I would say the one thing I, I took from them, like I said, it was a very humbling experience. Just be grateful, man. It's like those kids, they don't have much and they're out there willing to learn, listen. Yes, sir. No, sir. What do you need me to do? Because they're grateful to, for the opportunities. Mm. So what I just took took from them is just like be grateful for everything because you never know. Yeah. You know what the, the next man has, like they don't have much. So have they have they seen any football? Are they Did they tell you that they'd seen some football or just? I mean, as much as, I mean, I know that it's there, but do they watch any TV or watch any football? It doesn't really come on back home, but I know this guy's name is Benson. He was the defensive MVP of the camp. Hmm. Um, so if you go down his Instagram, he has a bunch of passwords drills. So he's been learning on oh, his own. Oh, he was, so he was prepared. He was, like, he was sandbagging. He was, yeah, he, was yeah, he was showing <laughs> the moves. I was like, man, okay, you got this. Did right? he show up from jump or did he pretend like he didn't know what he was doing? From jump, we know it. I, I just know he was going to be MVP off, yeah. off the jump. I told Osi, I was funny. like, yeah. Osi even told me too. He was like, yeah, I know Benson too. He's going to be the MVP. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. <laughs> right off red. Yeah, off, off the jump. Yeah. Oh, man. He'll sleep on his IG. Yeah. Well, you know, I, 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 the trip like that now was it was it all work and no play or did you get a chance to you know to experience a, a lot while you're over in, in Kenya oh no I got a chance to experience I I know I wanted to see the Lions so bad so we got a chance to go to the National Park you're a big cat guy yeah I'm, I, I, I love Lions um, yeah. um but yeah I got a chance to see a bunch of different animals and it was a it was amazing because I've never seen a lion in person so that was my first time actually really? seeing it. Yeah, that was my first incredible, time seeing right? It. it was incredible. Huge animals, man. <laughs> and, and it's funny because, you know, you think like at the zoo, they're in cages now. We're in cages. We're in the car. Right, right. You know, yeah. We're in their territory. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to stick your hand out too right. much. Right? We're not advised that. Yeah, so, so it, was, it, was, it was great. It's no secret at this point that yeah. service is important to you. Yeah. Um, you were the Natmore Community Service Award winner, which Juice and I understand is a huge honor here for this organization. Um, and uh, we both spend a lot of time in our, when we're not podcasting, uh, in the nonprofit space. Um, you just started the Rise Above Foundation last year. Talk about what inspired you to start the organization. Talk about the mission of the organization. Why is it just so important to you to give back when if you can I say this all the time people don't understand this it's not your obligation to do that yeah. you could show up and be the best football player you could be and millions of Dolphins fans would absolutely love you for it but you make a conscious decision to do extra yeah. why is it so important to you um it's very important to me because I've always been big on the youth because I feel like they're they're our future mm. you know and you know coming from a, a place like Houston Texas you could easily be you can easily go the wrong way. It's it's so easy, especially if your peers are around. So my my main goal of the of the foundation is to just to impact the youth by creating like a sustainable program to help their long term achievement. So my ultimate goal is to create a community center in, in my uh, neighborhood, just to you know in just your hometown. Yeah, my hometown. Okay. Yeah, just to have a safe place for you know the youth so they could go either you know read books do sports, hang out with friends, just somewhere safe that they could do that instead of hanging out in the streets. Right. Yeah, but um, but 
what what actually started because I started doing my camps I would say four four years ago I started having football camps and the reason I had a football camp is because a guy named OC not OC uh Russell O'Kong yeah he was an alumni at my high school and he had one camp and I told myself when I get in the NFL this is when I was young I was like when I get in the NFL I gotta have I a camp it, yeah. you know, I gotta have a camp and so I've been trying to do it like every year ever since uh I've been in the league well this is going to be my fourth camp coming up so, uh, you know, just, just trying a way just to help my community, you know, uh, uh, do the best I can because I know where I came from. You know, we didn't have much starting off and now I'm living the American dream. It's only right I give back. During COVID, uh, we provided uh, Chromebooks through, for, the, for the Boys and Girls Club of Houston because uh, I, I, I figured that those kids, they would need like some sort of like communication, those need some type of like, you know, the internet, digital. internet. Yeah. So I produced that for them to be able to like, you know, still engage in their classroom and doing schoolwork while they couldn't go to school physically. So those are like one of the things. And also providing books too, to Boys and Girls Club in Miami as yeah. well. So How rewarding is it to, to see it come to fruition? Now you officially have your organization and you're seeing it grow to build towards that long-term goal of that center. Yeah, well, I. T I observe, I watch how people do their, theirs, yeah. and I want like my own thing, you know, I want to produce my own, you know, sure. type of uh, <clears throat> community service. But uh, but it, it's amazing how guys, you know, around the league are doing the same thing I'm doing and just, you know, helping their community out and I'm just doing the best I can. Just help That's mine. great. All right, you know, let's talk some football. All right. Let's, let's talk a little it. football, right? <laughs> so Seth and I are talking about, you know, um, the roster and everything is starting to come together. You know, we got a healthy Emmanuel Ogba back. You know, we got a young... Jalen Phillips, we got Chubb, you know, we got Van Ginkle, you got Vic Fangio's, you know, his defensive scheme. Is it hard for you guys not to get excited about the possibilities with what you guys can do up front right now? We just got to worry about the now. So that's, that's what Mike says all the time. Worry about the he now. He took that deep breath, though. I know, like, I know, I know. I can see some nah, excitement. Was there, a bit of yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just like y'all see, we see it too, I'm telling you. But, yeah, we're definitely excited about it. But, yeah, like Mike always says, like, focus on the now. Attack the now, you know. Right now we're OTA, well, phase one right now. We got to attack that. And uh, having Vic is uh, having a new system. You know, I got to learn that as well. So right now we're in the learning phase of it. So Right. You know, being the vet now, you got some young guys that, you know, that are in your group right there. And you talked a little bit about how last year, how when you were out, that how you were helping that way. Now you're actually after doing the work and doing the drills with these young guys too, man. How, how was that veteran role? How are you handling that veteran role with these guys? Oh, uh, they look at me like the old head. Yeah, 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 I've been there. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, man, it feels good to be back, man. It feels good to be back playing football again, you know, just moving around with the guys. You know, that camaraderie like we, we're building is, 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 is inspirational and it's going to drive us uh, as far as we can go. Um, but yet the young guys, you know, they, they ask me questions. They feel like I've been around for years. So they ask me different questions like, hey, how's this work? Or how do you take care of your body during the off season? Um, I, was like, I was like, so I just kind of like coach them up. I just tell them, like, hey, you do this, you do that. And then, then you figure out what you want to do on your own body. Like, you know your body better than anybody else. So. You were talking about when you were over there doing the flag, the, 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 the NFL experience pretty much over in Africa. Like, some days, some dog days, man, you don't want to come in to work, man. You don't want to come get it in. But for you being out last, you got to chomp at the bit every single day to come in and, and, and have that influence with the younger guys, but also get back at, you know, learning Vic's defense and things like that. Yeah, it's like some days, you know, your body's going to be like, no, nah, I don't feel like doing this. Like, oh, man, I'm tired. But, hey, I've sat out. Like, I've been out, you know. It's like, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm yeah, trying to right. get back out there, you know. I'm trying to move around and see how I feel again. You get what I'm saying? Because I've been just out of football, I feel like, for some time. So, you know, just getting back just brings me happiness, brings me joy as well. So that's why I just want to be back out there again. So. Yeah, I love it. You know, you talk about how they look at you as the old head. Yeah. And it happens so quickly in yeah. this league. You go, you know, you're going in your eighth season. Is that right? And, and in NFL years, that is a long time. But it wasn't that long ago that you were the young guy looking up to people and, and asking them for advice. When do you sense that transition? I would say it didn't really hit me till I would say uh, my second year on the Dolphins, second year on the Dolphins. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's when it really hit me like, oh, like, they looking at me like, I'm the old head. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm still moving. I can still move. Right, what y'all right, talking right. about? But yeah, they're looking at me because, you know, they the questions they come and ask, I'm like, man, I didn't have to think about it when I was young. That's what I was asking Paul Kruger when I was in uh, Cleveland. Right. That's what I was asking him. But it's like, they're they looking up to me like, hey, like, 
what do I do with this? And like, how does this work and such? But yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, awesome, you know, doing <laughs> that because I've been experienced now and I, and I know what it takes. I mean, going into year eight, so I'm not new to this. Your longest tenure with any team is now the Dolphins. You're a Dolphin more than, than any other play, uh, team that you've been associated with, which we certainly like, you right, know, which, sure. is, which is really cool. Um, and I don't want to create a narrative here, but in you coming back now after injury and then just having this experience you just had a couple of weeks ago in yeah. Africa and working with those young athletes mm -hmm. and seeing how hungry they are, mm -hmm. can you draw any inspiration from them as you go back and, and going to step back on this field? Yeah, that's why I said, you know, it was a humbling experience. That's why I'm grateful. That's what I got from them. I'm just grateful how, you know, they were eager to learn without having much, you know, and I have this now. I get to take care of my family. I get to put my first foot forward, you know, just uh, do the best I can and help the people around me and succeed, so. All right, Emmanuel, well, we're gonna let you get out of here, but before we do, okay. before we do, we have this thing that we do on the fish tank, it's called the, uh, you know, we do a two minute drill. Oh. So we're gonna we finish up with a two minute <laughs> Ooh, drill. So what is now, an offensive now, guy? Now, they now offensive guys, the <laughs> see, you know, it's a little different. Now, offensive guys are trying to get in the score. Yeah. He's trying to get three Stop and out. Or three he's out trying out to whatever. get a strip sack. He's trying to get, yeah, he's trying trying to get up out of there, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, until in the end zone, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two minutes on the clock. Yeah. All right, and we're gonna fire off a couple questions at you. Some quick hitters, we want some quick hitter answers from you. Okay. Like you are a big hitter that you are. And we're gonna see what you got, all right? Yeah. We spoke about your safari experience earlier. So we're going to go on a safari, but here, downstairs in the Dolphins locker room. Okay. Who are some of the wild personalities? We're going out in the wild. Who are yeah. the wild personalities we might come across on this Dolphins locker room safari? Christian. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah. You said like a couple names or just? Yeah, you, like yeah, you tell me. Christian, Raekwon. Uh, <laughs> I'm sensing the train. Tyreek. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got to cheat. Got to have a cheat on the safari. Duke. Okay. Duke. Wild personalities. All right, so last year you were nice enough to support my foundation's bowling event, you know, and you uh, you came out there, you know, um, and you were out there with the man who was responsible for our theme song, ah, Solo D. Okay. Solo. So Solo. I actually talked to Solo this morning. Okay. And I asked him who was a better bowler. I uh, want to know who you ooh. think is a better bowler because I know what he said. Between me and him? Yeah. So I was a little rusty <laughs> that day. I was a little rusty that day. So, so I, what happened I, I, was I'll give it to him that day. That day, so okay. I was rusty that day. I'll right. give it to him that hey, day. He said it was him, so yeah. 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 I, I, I knew someone was going to say I, it was I, I, him. I was rusty, so i give it to him. Okay, all right. I hope I don't mess this up. So right. your middle name, oh boy, Ikachuku? Ikachuku. Ikachuku. Okay, yeah. all right. I did it right. Yeah. It means God's power. Yeah. What is your power? Uh, My power? I'll say I'm strong. I'll say that. I'm yeah, strong. we've seen that. Yeah, we've yeah. definitely strong. seen and some that. Some tackles have seen like, it too. Man, like my like superhero power. Type. Yeah, yeah. I'll say I'm strong. I'll say okay, I'm strong. so he's so on strong. Yeah, 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 put that down. You're the fifth Nigerian Miami Dolphin to join us in the fish tank, following Adewale and Gulie, Aiken Adele, Brendan and Femi Ayinbadejo. In one word, what makes Nigerian players great dolphins? We uh, come from humble beginnings. Uh, we're really structured and we, we we have a great work ethic also yeah. that. And we heard that from all of them. All of them, said, absolutely. That was more than absolutely. one word, but, but that was, one word. No, that's okay yeah. though. Yeah. It's okay yeah. because yeah. it's absolutely the right answer. It's yeah. consistent, mm -hmm. it's the two minute drill, but it's it's fascinating to us and we had a run, right? We, you know, yeah. Wale was, was early, but then we had Aiken and then we had both the, uh, the uh, Yambadejo brothers and it's like, man, and there was great pride. There was great pride and, and they, you know, they shouted you out and it's just great pride to see other Nigerian players step into prominence in this league and uh, humble beginnings and a great work, work ethic. I think we've certainly seen that. For sure. Yeah, For sure. Uh, uh, good stuff, man. Well, I can't wait to see that work ethic back on the field. We are all very much excited about that. Mm -hmm. Juice knows I, I love my pass rushers oh, though. Yeah. So that's what, you know, he, we give out these game balls yeah. at the end of every game <laughs> when the team wins. Okay. And Juice starts from the wideout position, yeah, if you always. can imagine. Always. Now, now, granted, there were some earned game balls from yeah. the wideouts that are on this squad. But I'm like, can we look at a pass rusher here? Yeah. You know, can we go look at a pass rusher? So we're hoping that there are some game balls. Well, I started out. giving out a lot to pass rushers. You at did. The end, so he I did got, shift. Yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes 
<laughs> you know, I was one of those guys in the locker room that was yeah. hanging out more with the defensive guys and yeah, all okay. guys. So I'm really a defensive player to play okay. wide out. You know what, what, what does it take? We're going totally off the rails here. <laughs> totally <laughs> off the rails. What does it take? So it's a defensive guy. Yeah. What does an offensive player have to do to earn the respect where he could come down and sit down? Well, you guys are different now, too, because every when when juice played our locker room was it was really segmented the yeah. wideouts and quarterbacks were here yeah. in the D line like if you walk through the D line you better be ready if yeah. you walked into that side of the locker room what does it take for a wideout to come sit down uh, next to a couple of D linemen and be accepted not be looked at sideways like what are you doing on this side you gotta of town be tough you got to know how you play yeah you got to play tough yeah you to gain Involved in the group, so you gotta be a. Got to earn that respect. Right. You gotta earn that's that. Right. You gotta be a tough. See, that's what I did, big stuff. Well, I mean, I can't. I even, I even challenged a couple of them. I wanted to fight a couple. <laughs> he did. You know, yeah. I, I wasn't gonna win, I but hey, I, I was gonna say how that worked out. <laughs> but he did. Listen, when Dan Marino calls you the toughest player that I ever played with. I guess you get to sit down with the D line. I don't know if that. Morning. I don't know if it says something about the other guys or if it says something about me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, appreciate the time, man. I know there's a lot of things. You guys are back in the building. There's yeah. a lot of focus about getting back on the field. But mm -hmm. for you to spend a little time with us, we definitely appreciate it. And yeah. uh, excited to see you get back out there, man. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for having me. I yeah, appreciate man. you guys. Hey, yeah. Thanks for diving in. Yes, sir.